A universe of possibility lies before us. A world where connectivity is like air. With Qualcomm inventions empowering a revolutionary 5G platform, we foresee instantaneous access, immersive experiences anywhere, autonomous cars, robotics integrated into our everyday life, truly remote healthcare, smart cities, a connectivity fabric of everything. Anyone can talk about 5G. We are creating it. Hi guys, we are here again in Barcelona at the Qualcomm booth and we are joined right now by uh, Durga Malati and we're going to be chatting about 5G. Uh, so Durga, can you tell us a little bit about what Qualcomm has been doing around 5G recently? Sure. So Qualcomm has been working on 5G for the past two years or even more than that. And as we've been working towards that, we're building up our design, our prototype testbed, we're driving the standardization activities. And at this point in time, we've reached a point where we're working with a large number of our partners in terms of showcasing the technology and testing it out so that we prime it for commercialization uh, by the time the specifications are done. So uh, in our booth, for instance, we've got like a few demos over here that showcase how 5G works with uh, below six gigahertz, uh, how 5G works in millimeter wave, and we're really focused on the mobilization part of it. In other words, how does 5G mobile work in millimeter wave uh, and below 6 gigahertz. And we've made a large number of uh, recent announcements on our partnerships with uh, infra vendors and with uh, operators. And one of these demos is also being shown in one of our partner booths in China Mobile. Great. Can you talk a little bit about the 5G partnerships that you guys have going sure. on now and uh, why those are important in getting right, to yeah. 5G? So, the 5G study item, uh, the studies that are started in 3GPP, they started in March of last year and they're expected to complete next month and then the formal work process will begin and uh, we were very keen on making sure that we have early commercial deployments in 2019 and with, in the fo with, with that sort of a focus we wanted to make sure that okay if it's going to be 2019 and the specifications are done in 2018 then we don't want to wait till the specifications are complete and then formally start the test process. We wanted to start testing it as the specs are being developed. And that way the overall commercialization pipeline is primed for uh, deployments. So in that sense, uh, you might have noticed that we made quite a few announcements, but actually some of these announcements started back in December. So we made a very first announcement with uh, Ericsson and SK Telecom back in December. Uh, earlier this year at CES time frame, we made the next announcement and that was with AT&T in the US and so it was us, AT&T and Ericsson. Last week then we made a third announcement and that's with us, China Mobile and, Ch and ZTE. So China Mobile uh, and China in general is an important market for us. Uh, and then this week we made other announcements with Vodafone, with Telstra and with NTT Docomo. So if you take a look at the geographically, I mean it's Europe, North America, Japan, Korea and China. So we've kind of covered all the places. And uh, all these operators are very eager to see, okay, what am I going to get out of 5G NR? And uh, it's no longer just a proprietary thing wherein we show up with our base stations and our devices, but it's really a true interoperable testing with us and an infrastructure vendor on the other side. So we are quite excited about it and all these partnerships are very, going to, it's going to be very useful for us. We did something similar back in the early 4G days as well. So we expect a similar sort of exercise to occur now and uh, help the commercialization process. Great. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what you've learned so far through those trials um, and, yeah. and how you're going to apply those lessons? Sure. So just to be clear, the trials are supposed to start from the second half of this year. Actually, it starts with uh, interop testing in the lab and then going into the field. Now, one of the things that we've actually learned uh, when we take a look at millimeter wave, you know, we actually look, took the approach of, we know how to make millimeter wave work in a fixed wireless deployment, right? And it's been used for backhaul for a long time. Our key uh, focus was on how do you make it into a mobile system? How do you make sure it works in a non-line of sight environment? Because you, ha you have the phone with you or any other device in all sorts of configurations, which is not typically used for fixed wireless backhaul. So we did a lot of testing on that just as an early phase. And now we've reached into a point where we think that, yeah, it's a promising technology. There's plenty of bandwidth. And in fact, uh, some of the demos over here show that it works remarkably well. Similarly, in the below 6 gigahertz, one of the challenges that comes up is, hey, we're going to be using some of the higher bands, the 3 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz bands, and coverage is usually a problem with that. So if you're going to be deploying a 5G new radio in 3 gigahertz and 4 gigahertz, does it really give us the coverage that we want? This, is, this was one of the challenges that we had about 2-3 years back. We believe we've kind of solved it by looking at extreme beam forming using massive MIMO technology. It does two things. First of all, because of the ability to beam form, we get very good coverage. 
and on top of that we can serve multiple users at the same time so it increases the overall capacity of the network so these are very promising techniques now of course we've tested them in a proprietary manner so far we look forward to doing that with all of our partners uh, both in the vendor community and with the operators and last question here uh, hype and trials aside what kind of timeline can we really expect for 5g rollouts so we made a product announcement uh, earlier uh, i think on sunday and uh, basically we are making sure that uh, we can enable commercial deployments uh, quite early sometime in the late 2019 time frame from a standards process, we expect the work item to begin next month. We made a pretty strong commitment towards it. We worked with a large number of our partners, there's like 22 companies that together said, let's accelerate the overall standardization process and make sure that the specifications are completed by the middle of next year. In fact, some parts of the specifications will be done even earlier than that. It's known as a non-standalone mode, wherein you kind of use 4G as an anchor and use 5G uh, as a booster uh, in, uh, in certain areas, in hotspot areas. So the timeline is, specs will complete towards uh, the middle of next year with some parts being done later this year. And then that leads us to commercialization sometime in 2019. Of course, in the end, it depends upon the operators and the auctions and the spectrum that they have and so on. But we are pretty excited about it. So we've kind of moved gradually away from the hype and now it's like to down to brass tacks and get, get the work going. All these announcements are very useful for us, but as you said, we still have to work towards making sure it works right. Well, great. We are excited to see the rollouts happen. And uh, thank you guys all for joining us here on the floor at Mobile World Congress. Uh, be sure to stay tuned to Wireless Week for more developments from Qualcomm and the rest of the industry.